Okay, g'day everyone, welcome to the video. In this one, we're going to be looking at the GST reconciliation report. Now this report is quite important before you, you go to lodge the final BAS for the end of the year. So if you're lodging every quarter, you would run this report before you lodge your quarter four BAS or the April to June BAS. So let's go have a look at the report now. So go accounting, reports, Scroll down to the tax section and we're going to go GST reconciliation. Now, if we were going to just lodge our bass as normal, say for a normal quarter being, or you know, any quarter other than the final quarter of the year, we would go to the activity statement. We've run our reports We've looked at the GST order report, so we're going to go ahead and lodge these numbers just say. So we'll open up the activity statement. And here we are in the activity statement and we're running simpler bass in this example. So what we're going to do is go to the reporting period and let's say this is the final quarter of the 2021 financial year. So that's June, 2021. And we'll scroll down and look at the GST numbers. So we've got on 1A, GST on sales, we've got 2860. If we go over to the GST reconciliation report, we've got to change the dates up here to reflect the full financial year. Being FY21. And on the activity statement, we had 2860 against 1A for the June quarter. And we can go here, look at the June quarter. There's your 2860. Back over to the activity statement. For 1B, we had 2008. So for GST paid, 1B, the June quarter, 2008. Now, what we have here is we have an opening unfiled amount here, which is going to throughout our numbers. So this suggests that something may have been missed in the previous financial year, but for the sake of the example, we're just going to pretend that everything from previous financial year was done correctly. So to run this report the way we want to run it, we're gonna to have to bust it out to Excel so we can make a couple of adjustments. So I'm gonna go export to Excel. And here it is here. So all we're, because we're going to ignore this opening balance from the previous financial year, I'm just gonna zero that. And the same for GST paid. And here we can see what has been, what is in the system for each quarter. So our first step to go is to go over to this filed section. And here you can see there's nothing has been filed for the first two quarters. So it looks like the business only started up in quarter three. So we'll just say, yes, nothing was filed in the first two quarters. So to get these filed numbers, you'll go onto your business portal or you'll look at your, your, your final BAS report where the numbers um, were used to lodge with the ATO. Now we've gone back and we've had a look at the quarter three, the March quarter. And zero is saying $200, but we can see that we only lodged $100 for GST on sales. And we go back and look at GST on purchases. And zero is saying there was 200, but we only lodged say $50 for GST paid. So what happens here is, or how this can arise is if you're not locking off your quarter at the end, or like at least doing a soft lock at the end of the quarter um, before lodging. So an advisor can override the soft lock, an advisor being your bookkeeper or your tax agent. They can override the soft lock and make changes to the zero file. Um, what can happen if you're not locking off your quarter and you've lodged the bass here for 200 and then after it's lodged someone has gone in 
and process, process some more transactions in that quarter after the bass has been lodged, so the numbers now don't align. This is why only 100 was filed, but now zero is saying it's 200. So someone's made some changes there and someone's made some changes here. So like I said, this can happen if you're not locking off your quarters and anyone can go in and make a change, or if you are soft locking the quarters, maybe your accountant went in and made a change. Um, but if you're hard locking the quarters, then realistically there'd be no changes unless someone unlocked, made a change and then locked again. But so for whatever reason, changes can happen. So that's why it's very important to run this report here, the GST reconciliation. So you can true up your bass balances before you make the final lodgement for the year. So here we can see 100 was filed and 200 is in the system. So if it was in alignment, so we got 200 filed with the ATO and 200 in zero. Now unfiled was saying 2860, which matches what is in zero. And we can do a quick formula. So it's in alignment. Now if this was only 100 filed, now it's saying there's been 2960 unfiled, even though zero is saying 2860. And we can go back to our report here, the activity statement to see 2860. But because there was a change in quarter three that didn't align to what was lodged with the ATO, we need to go with this figure here to pick up anything that was missed. So it's gonna be $100 higher. And if you do the same calculation here, zero is saying 2008 for GST paid, but because only 50 was filed and later there were some changes made here to increase that from 50 to 200, this is gonna be 150 extra. We need to file 2159, not the 2008. So all this report does is it picks up any changes that were made to the system that were backdated after the bass was lodged for that period of time. So it's very important. So we've done this little check here. So now we know that we gotta change our figures. So the figures that we're gonna be lodging are these ones here. So now we're going to go back over to our activity statement and we're going to make an adjustment to 1A. So I probably shouldn't have deleted my little formula here because we're going to use that for the adjustment. So 1A is going to be increased by $100 and I'll put so we're gonna put in $100 and I'm just gonna say GST rec, just so we know where the adjustment's coming from and we know to refer back to this file here. So we've bumped it up $100, so it's now saying 2960, and that's there. Now we need to adjust the GST paid, adjust 1B, and GST paid is also going to be increased by 150 this time or if you're rounding to the nearest dollar, 151, or if you're dropping the cents, 150. We'll just drop the cents for this example. We'll say it's 150. And 2008 has gone to 2158. And we should have actually rounded up because as you can see here, it's 2159. So 151, yep. Now, as you can see, I've made a bit of a mess of this. So it's gone up by another 151. So I'm gonna take off 150 to try and get it back to that 2159. Yep, there it is, 2159. So all I should have done in the first place is put in 151 and that would have got it to 2159. 
So now we've got our 2159 for 1B and our 2960 for 1A. So we're happy with that. The GST side we're happy with, but what you should also do is a full payroll reconciliation um, of what's been lodged. So you'd go through each, if you're lodging your PAYGW uh, quarterly, you would go through your quarterly lodgements and um, you would see, you would compare what Zero is telling you has been paid out in wages and tax withheld in wages for the full year minus what has been lodged with the ATO for the first three quarters will give you what you need to lodge for the fourth quarter, if that makes sense. So the same concept as we've done here, but for your gross wages and your PAYGW. I won't go through and break this out in the spreadsheet now, but that's basically how it works. And you would also do the same, well, actually for your PAYGI, your income tax instalment, you'd just get that from your BAS portal and you'd put it in here. So that's basically it, guys. Once you've done your GST reconciliation, you can be sure that if there were any changes made into zero after lodgements were made to the ATO, then this report will make sure that you pick up any lodgements and that your BAS lodged will also, and your, you know, your G1 sales figure and all of that will align to your tax return, which is important as well. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Um, we're running a training organization here, so if you want to book in a training session, we can offer tailored online training sessions, www.qtraining.net.au in the description. And you can go to our website and submit a contact form and we can have a chat and organize a training session so we can organize a training session tailored to whatever your business's needs. We might also be able to come out and do an in-person training session, have a chat to us, we'll see what we can organize. But that's it for this one, guys. If you gained a little bit of knowledge here, I'd appreciate a like. If you want to see more videos, hit subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.